Yo, what's up everybody? Chris Strada here. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the uh, rig that I'm using for the Hills and Valleys tour with Torrin Wells. Um, as you can see, I have a spaceship here, um, but it's actually not that complicated. But anyways, starting with the drums, I'm using a Yamaha um, Birch Custom Absolute. I love this kit, it sounds great. Um, 22 inch kick, 16 inch floor tom, uh, 12 inch rack time, 10 inch rack tom. Uh, I'm using Remo drum heads. I have pinstripe heads on these. They sound great. Um, so I'm using three snares. I know everybody's like, oh my gosh, what do you need three snares for? Trust me, there's purpose behind every thing that I'm using on this kit. Nothing is for looks. Uh, the main snare I'm using is uh, my Mapex Black Panther snare. I love this thing. It could crank up super high, but I'm using it more of like a medium tuning. Uh, so I'm using this as my main snare. Um, over here, I'm using a 14 inch by four and a half um, Yamaha Recording Custom snare. And this is more of my deep snare. I'm also using a big fat snare drum on top of the drum. Shout out to Big Fat Snare Drum. Uh, shout out to Ben, every, everybody over there. It's my family, happy to be a part. Hey, um, they make awesome accessories and stuff. Have some other toys from them. Uh, so that's that snare. I'm also using a 13 inch Yamaha Musashi snare. And I have this cranked up like pretty high just to get more crack out of it for those type of songs that need it. So that's pretty much all the drums. We can go to sticks using Promark uh, 5B. And I picked up the one with the nine line tips uh, just because, just to get some more uh, detail out of the symbols and everything. I've never really used these with the nylon tips, but I like them, they feel great. Um, okay, I guess we can move on to the symbols next. I'm using all Zildjian symbols. Hopefully one day I will be able to say I'm a part of their family. Starting with the hi-hats, I'm using the K's. Uh, 14 inch K hi hats, uh, they just give a lot of definition and texture, and they're not too bright and they're not too dark either. They're just, just right for what I'm playing. Uh, over here, I have the 16 inch dark crash K dark crash. I uh, love this thing. Over here, one of the newer symbols from Zildjian is the K sweet crash. This is a 20 inch, this is my main crash, and it, it's perfect. It's a little bit more on the dark side. Uh, which I love it. I don't need anything like super bright. Uh, over here, I'm using the eight, uh, K eight inch splash. I just love having this little thing. It just, it bites as well as this one bites as well. This is a 10 inch uh, A custom DFX uh, splash. And I love this thing. This is probably my favorite symbol that Zilzer made. Uh, it just, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just dope. Over here, I'm using the uh, K 20 inch ride. Um, same thing, I, I just it, it just works for what I'm doing. It has a nice bell, I can crash on it, and it has great stick definition. Over here, I have the K uh, Dark Crash 18 inch, which is basically the same thing as this one, but this is 18 inches. And then last but not least, I have the Zildjian Oriental China. This is an 18 inch. Uh, Oriental China right here. And a lot of people ask why I don't use a stack, which I would love to use a stack. I just haven't like put one together. With this China, it, it cuts as well and it's dope for what I'm playing. So now I guess I can move on to the electronic side of everything. Starting with, everybody knows what this is, the Roland SPDS X. Um, I'm using sounds that's already in the drum pad as well as loaded sounds that I've uh, created myself. Um, so I'm, I'm playing sounds, but I'm also using this as a trigger to start the songs, uh, stop the songs, and turn the click on and off. So you're asking or well, wondering how I did that. I've taken all the sounds off the first three pads. That way when I um, hit this one, which I've assigned as my play pad, it doesn't make a sound when I hit it. Same thing for stop and click on and off. So I'm just, this is actually doing a lot of sending and receiving MIDI changes, um, uh, which I can dig into that a little bit more. 
I also have these Boss uh, FS5U pedals connected down here as well, triggering different things in my Ableton session, which I will get to in a second. So coming out of this drum pad, I'm also using two Roland bar triggers. Uh, and mainly a lot of these, just, uh, for most of the songs, just claps on them. Uh, and then over here I have some 808 drops and some chimes and big booms. Um, I love these things. So these things are like, I've been wanting these for a while and they're, they're great. Um, okay, so let's get over to the triggers that I'm using. So I'm using a trigger on my kick, my main snare, and this uh, third snare up here as well. Um, and they're all triggering sounds that are on the record. And what I mean by that is the, the like the kick sounds that you hear from the actual songs that we're playing. Not all of them, but a few of them. Uh, I have that triggering the actual sound. And I have those sounds going through um, my Roland TM6 Pro, which is an awesome um, trigger hub. It has uh, six inputs and four outputs. So I'm actually running the kick trigger separate, like going through its own channel to front of house, as well as the snare trigger separate and this snare trigger separate as well. Um, so front of house can control it like he's mixing a real kick or a real snare. Um, these are not used to control gates as most people use them, um, actually triggering sounds from the record. So are you sending and receiving? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So as well as playing drums, I'm also the music director, so I have a talk back mic and I'm calling different songs and changes and reminding everybody of little things during the show. Uh, but I'm also singing background vocals as well, as well as the rest of the band members. So one thing that made it easy for me to do that, instead of having two mics, I have one mic and I'm plugging that one mic, SM58, Sure SM58, into a pedal called the Hot Shot by Radio. And so I plug one mic into the pedal, but then I have two outputs. So one output, XLR output, is my talk back line, and the other output is my singing background vocal uh, line. There's a toggle switch on here that I just switch on, well, not switch on and off, but switch from one channel to the other. And I know you're probably thinking, don't you get confused on which channel is which? Well, I made it easy. I panned my talk back mic to my left, and I panned my vocal right, vocal mic to the right, so that I know, like, okay, if I hear my mic on the left, then it means it's a talk back, and if I hear it on the right, it's my background vocal mic. So that's one thing that's pretty cool. All right, so for the stem setup, I'm using Ableton 10, I'm running on two MacBooks. Um, yeah. These things are powerhouses, they're awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm running a redundant system, so I'm using two computers. Uh, this one is as my main computer and this is the backup. So for those of you who don't know what redundant is, um, the reason why I have two computers running the same thing, if something were to happen to this one, you know, battery dies, cable gets unplugged or something, this computer automatically takes back over. <laughs> Uh, without without any hesitation, it's seamless. So the way I'm able to do that is running this redundant system through the Play Audio 12 interface. And it has two USB ports on there so we can plug in both computers and um, run both computers at the same time. So the way I'm doing this is uh, over here, I'm using the Akai Professional uh, MPD-218. And I have all my songs all the songs that I want to trigger on each pad and then um, so all I do is go to the song and as you can see let's say I'm going to go to Citizen when I press Citizen here it goes right there but it also changes over here so um, and then when I start the song uh, the cool thing is, is that I'm sending MIDI changes to my drum pad because I have different sounds for this song as well as my uh, triggers module as well so once I press start on this, you'll see this change right here. So some of the other MIDI things that I'm doing with this is I'm sending program changes from Ableton to our bass player synth bass um, that he's using. He's using Moog, and um, 
I'm setting program changes so he doesn't have to switch for every song. As soon as I start that song, it automatically changes his patch for him. I'm also doing the same thing, like I said, with my drum pad, my triggers module, and I'm also sending program changes to Uriah's pedal board. Um, and it's changing uh, his bank for every song. So basically, he has banks set up for every song and he has presets within those banks. And what I'm able to do is then, when I start one song over here and I press start, it switches the song for him over there so he doesn't have to be scrolling through a bunch of banks to get to the song. So it's a lot of work, but I'm doing that and through the iConnectivity MIDI interface, which makes everything super easy. Um, it's a really awesome setup. So iConnectivity, these guys are killing it with all the gear that they're doing. So let me show you a little bit of the back of the interface, or sorry, the back of the track rack. So this is the back of the track rack, which it may look a little bit messy, but it's actually very dope how it's set up. Shout out to Luke, who's our front of house engineer slash production manager, who built this track rack and put all this together. So back here, there's an eight channel DI and um, it has XLR output. So instead of a bunch of DIs and cables and stuff, there's this one DI rack and there's an eight channel snake coming out of this DI rack. So it's not a bunch of XLRs and stuff. So I'm going out of the Play Audio 12, uh, nine channels um, going into this DI rack. So I have it split out tracks left and right, loops, uh, left and right, background vocals left and right, click, separate, guide separate, and then I'm sending time code slash simty to uh, the guys in the back at the lighting board uh, so they can sync everything to the Ableton section. So when I start a song, all their lights change as well, so they're not having to like do stuff on the spot. So have that. He also put a DI back here for um, my triggers. So my trigger uh, quarter inches are going out of the TM6 Pro into the uh, back of this DI situation. And we have three XLRs coming out of that, which makes it super easy for setup. I'm not having to plug in a bunch of stuff every single day. Uh, one main power source right here, which is dope. Also, there's a DI over here for my drum pad uh, that I plug straight into that DI. And the XLRs for the drum pad come out right here so everything's right there it's super you know just compact everything's right there where I need it and then last but not least these are the two USB ports that go to the computers uh, so I have them labeled so I don't you know mess up which computers which and then those obviously go out to the two computers and I plug that in and like I said there's one power right here and everything just goes into a power source right there so that's my so that's my rig. Um, like I said, I love this setup. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, I'll probably post a um, like a time lapse video of how long it takes to set up and all that kind of stuff. But this is my rig on the, uh, on the Hills and Valleys tour with Torin Wells playing drums and MDing, and I love it. Shout out to all these companies: Yamaha, Remo, Promark, Zildjian, 64 Audio. Drum Dots, Rock and Sock, Ableton, iConnectivity, Mac, uh, Roland, Akai, Boss, everybody is just awesome. Uh, and I can't wait to represent your companies one day. Also wanna give a quick shout out to 1964 Ears. Uh, I'm using the A8 models. These things are awesome, I love them. Shout out to 64 uh, for helping us and always taking care of us and making sure we're always Having everything we need on the road, these ears are awesome. If you need some in-ears, go check out 1964 Audio. Tell them I sent you. I don't know if that's gonna do anything, but tell them I sent you. But last but not least, Big Fat Snare Drum, my actual family. Thank you for letting me be a part of y'all. Uh, y'all can go get this hoodie on their website. Tell them I sent you. Again, I don't know if that's gonna do anything, but sweet.